Melanie was sure that she and Oscar would marry. She had taken a liking to him from the first day he showed up at swim practice, where she had been practicing for several years. Melanie's appearance was not model-like. She had a big nose, freckles all over her face, narrow eyes, and a long chin, just like her father. Her relationship with her parents was not good either. Her elder sister Miranda was very attractive, with a graceful, beautiful nose, which was the main object of envy of Melanie since childhood. She spent hours studying her reflection in the mirror, only to be confirmed by what her mother told her every day. No guy would look at Melanie with such a huge nose. She'll have to choose a man who isn't too demanding. But she's very economical. The youngest daughter was always a good hostess. She learned early to cook and sew and kept the house clean. When the boys at school began making fun of Melanie's figure, she took up swimming and by the age 17 had the classic figure of a swimmer with broad shoulders, narrow hips, and a thin waist, which she tried to show off. The first time she met Oscar, when the coach told the guy to find a vacant locker for his personal belongings, the girl was just outside the empty locker. She confidently approached the attractive stranger and introduced herself. Hi, I'm Melanie. If you need a locker, I can show you where it is. The guy went after her. He was taller than the girl, which she liked very much. Melanie was self-conscious about her height, and she dreamed of having a boyfriend who made her look small and gentle in front of him, and this guy seemed to fit right in. The new guy had light, blue, almost transparent eyes, a thin nose, and a good-natured smile on his round face. His blonde hair was cropped short, and a small silver cross was visible through the unbuttoned collar of his shirt. The guy's name was Oscar. They exchanged phone numbers and started calling each other. Melanie called more often, but her new acquaintance didn't mind. Oscar had just returned from the army, and he hadn't had much contact with girls even before the service. He didn't particularly like to talk about himself. So Melanie knew that he was into cars and he was an economics major. Melanie told him that her family had had a lot of conflicts between her parents lately. You know, it makes me not even want to come home. I'm so sick of listening to these scandals. Oscar watched her for three years without making any attempt to speed things up. Melanie was faithful, understanding, looked to him with devoted eyes, and was easy to talk to. The girl dreamed of becoming a medic, so she enrolled in the pediatrics department of the medical university. Melanie became one of the best students. One day, Oscar announced that he had won a contest for an internship abroad. Melanie was genuinely happy for him. But suddenly she realized that he would be gone, and for an unknown amount of time. Could he even stay there forever? When Oscar saw the girl's tearful, unhappy face, to his own surprise, he suddenly said, Melanie, marry me. We'll live abroad together. By the way, I'd better go there as a married man. Turns out they're suspicious of singles, so let's get married and go as normal spouses. What do you say? Melanie was shocked. Suddenly he leaned into the girl's face and kissed her. For the first time in three years. The girl's happiness was overflowing and she realized that her mother had been wrong about her. That's it, Mommy. He loves me. However, from that day on, Melanie did not give Oscar a chance to rest. Every day, the bride called him and demanded that he discuss with her parents where, when, and how the wedding ceremony would take place. Oscar was embarrassed to talk about it with his parents, who did not share his intentions to get married soon. Son, why get married so young? Finish university, work, travel. I've been together with her for three years, explained the boy patiently, who, to his own shame, the prospect of marrying Melanie was a little frightening. The day before the wedding, Oscar went with friends to a picnic to celebrate the upcoming wedding ceremony in strict male company. He returned in high spirits, and his parents told him the strange news. Your fiancé called, said she wouldn't sleep all night, and demanded that you call her back. An incomprehensible Oscar called Melanie. The girl immediately answered and began to express her displeasure. Where have you been? Why didn't you come to the wedding suit fitting? I've been waiting for you all day. 
Melanie, calm down, please. I tried on the suit yesterday. It was fine. Oscar tried to calm the girl down. Why didn't you come? Continued Melanie. I'm not your wife yet, by the way. I sit and wait for you like a fool and it turns out you're at a picnic? Admit it. Did you have time to sleep with someone there? Who was I supposed to sleep with if only my friends were there? Oscar began to get angry. Honey, let's talk in the morning. In a peaceful environment, when you'll be sleepy, rested, I'll come and get my beauty. Beautiful. She laughed into the phone. Beautiful means... You never called me that. Not in private, not with friends. I take it that I've never really been beautiful to you. And I never will be. She suddenly cried. Melanie, don't cry. Forgive me if I've offended you, but I don't understand anything now. And you don't need to understand anything. There will be no wedding. The call was cut off. Oscar was in shock, but an inner voice kept telling him that he needed to call her back. Girls are always nervous before a wedding. However, Melanie didn't answer. Tired of dialing her number, the guy disconnected the phone. Okay, we'll talk tomorrow. In the morning, there was pandemonium at Oscar's house. The groom's buddies all arrived dressed in their best cars and accompanied by their smart, beautiful girlfriends. Oscar thought that Melanie must be ready by now and gave the order to move out. However, it was quiet outside the girl's house. The puzzled groom tapped cautiously on the window. Melanie, hello. There's a marriage registration today. Did you remember? Melanie appeared on the porch dressed in her bathrobe and slippers. At the sight of Oscar dressed in his ceremonial suit, the girl's face twisted contemptuously. And where are you going dressed like that? Are you really going to a wedding? Melanie, what are you doing? We have a marriage registration, then a restaurant. Get dressed, we're already here. Go away, assholes. I changed my mind. I should have been such a fool to get involved with an idiot like you. Melanie turned around and walked back into the house. Oscar was furious. He had never been in this situation before. He had never heard anything like that about anyone else. Oscar's friends began to look at each other. Once in the car, the guy tore off his tie and demanded, Pour me a drink. What followed was an explanation of what had just happened between him and Melanie. The guys looked at each other. Then someone said, Oscar, if fate has given you a chance to get away from that hysterical girl, don't refuse. Let her sit in the house and be sorry she missed out on a husband like you. Am I right? You don't understand, shouted Oscar. I indicated on the form that I was married. If I come without my wife, I might be refused an internship. I'll marry the first woman I meet. Why go to the first one we meet? Let's go to our guest's house. We'll find someone there, the friend suggested to Oscar. And he, for one of any other choice, agreed. Among the girls waiting patiently for the bride and groom to arrive, one girl caught Oscar's eye. She was short, with dark skin and thin features. She was a little plump, but with a beautiful body line. After hesitating for a moment, Oscar approached her. Hi, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? The stranger looked at him in surprise and nodded. They stepped aside and Oscar worriedly talked about what had happened. The girl looked at him calmly. If I understand you correctly, you want the formal status of wife rather than actual wife, right? That's right, Oscar replied, surprised that he didn't have to waste time with a long explanation. I have to go abroad as a married man. From time to time, we will need to appear at common events as spouses. Whatever you do in your spare time is none of my business. You're free to do with yourself as you see fit. When the internship is over, we'll come back and we can dissolve the marriage. You won't have any obligations to me or to my relatives. That's an interesting suggestion, the girl grinned. After thinking about it, she said, Okay, I'll take it. Registration today? And you won't hit on me and demand spousal duty? No, no, Oscar was... No, no, Oscar was frightened. It's just that we have to live together for a week before we leave. And then we'll live separately until the end of the internship. No claims on you. Okay, then. So Oscar married Vivian, who came at the invitation of her friend. Vivian's friend almost fainted when she announced she was getting married. The wedding ceremony went smoothly. Oscar took his young wife to his house. He had a separate apartment inherited from his beloved aunt. Oscar was clean and kept the place in exemplary order. Vivian went to the bathroom and after a shower settled down to sleep in the living room. Her parents were shocked to hear about their daughter's unexpected marriage. If he's a good man, he won't do anything bad to you. 
And if he tries, he'll regret it very much, said the girl's father. They only had time to say goodbye before their daughter went abroad. The couple behaved very naturally in public. Oscar found that he enjoyed coming home, eating Vivian's delicious dinner, and talking with her about trivial things. Gradually, he began to catch himself thinking that he didn't want that kind of life to end. When he and Vivian bumped into each other one day in the bathroom doorway, Oscar felt as if she had burned him with her touch. A spark ran through his body, and he had the urge to squeeze the girl tightly in his arms. And when he saw the way she looked at him as they walked around in the evenings, Oscar knew he wanted to be with her always. He came in a little later that night, holding a bouquet of Vivian's favorite flowers and her favorite fruit. They talked for a long time, after which the girl got up and stretched. Well, that's it. It's time for bed. What do you want for dinner tomorrow? I like everything you cook, the man replied without taking his eyes off her. Vivian, you and I have been married for months. It feels good to have you around. Tell me, do you like me just a little bit? Honestly? The girl looked him in the eye. Yeah, you're an honest man, and that's very important to me. Do you like me? I really like you, Oscar replied in a husky voice, slowly rising from his seat. Maybe it's time we change the status of our marriage, so that's not just in the papers, but in reality. I promise I won't insist, if you don't mind. I'll just go to my room and not bother you. Vivian walked over and put both hands on Oscar's chest. She could feel his heart pounding furiously and whispered, I agree. It's time we moved on to another relationship. Oscar gently picked the girl up in his arms and carried her into the bedroom. A few weeks later, after returning home, to his surprise, Oscar saw Melanie on the doorstep of his house. She was neatly painted and dressed, and in no way resembled the awful girl who hadn't even let him in the doorway before her own wedding. Hello, groom, Melanie said mockingly. He replied confusedly, Hi, how are you? Why well, ask such questions when the answer is obvious, she replied. Melanie, I don't understand. What do you want from me? You turned down the wedding yourself. The thing is, you owe me, Melanie reminded him. Remember when you started talking about wanting to start your own business after your internship? I promised to help with the money. You got the money from me. The internship was over. You started your business... What about me? I have no husband and no money. Oscar looked at Melanie in amazement, not understanding how he was stupid enough to propose to her and take the money. Indeed, how? Vivian's parents demanded that their son-in-law stop by on his return. Their demand was met. Everyone was pleased, especially Vivian's mother. You can tell right away that he and my daughter didn't get married for nothing. They look great together, and they get along great with each other. It was... Oscar could call himself lucky. He had a smart and beautiful wife, sensible, responsive. He enjoyed coming home after work and enjoying the comfort of his surroundings. Sometimes Oscar wondered what his life would have been like if he had married Melanie after all. However, remembering her tantrums and stories of scandals between her parents, he realized he was definitely lucky that the girl had refused to get married at the last minute. Vivian never made any hasty decisions and she was surprised herself that she accepted the proposal of the guy she saw for the first time in her life an hour before the wedding. She herself decided it was time to turn a formal marriage into an official one. Otherwise, it would also be difficult for her parents to explain such intricacies of her marriage. I remember everything, Melanie, the man replied calmly and suggested. Let's meet tomorrow outside the bank after lunch. Bring me my receipt for the debt I took. I'll get a lawyer and we'll settle the matter, okay? Melanie pointed her hand toward Oscar's apartment and asked mockingly, So is she better than me? And how so? She's adequate, Melanie. See you tomorrow. Oscar closed the door in front of the girl's nose and exhaled. What luck that she refused to marry me then. Honey, what happened? came Vivian's voice. Nothing much. A stranger's got the wrong apartment. The next day, Melanie showed up at exactly the appointed time. Oscar and his lawyer were already waiting for her outside the bank. Melanie, what was the amount of the receipt again? asked Oscar for a short greeting. The girl silently showed him the piece of paper. Oscar nodded and walked into the bank building. Fifteen minutes later, he came out with a small paper bag. They walked to the cafe and settled in a closed booth. 
asking the waitress not to disturb them for the next ten minutes. Melanie, count the money, Oscar muttered. There was no hint of a previous relationship in his voice. The girl gloomily counted the money in front of the men and pronounced, Oh, that's right. That's the amount that's on the receipt. Then put your signature that you receive the money and have no claim on me. Oscar jabbed his finger at the document. Melanie looked up and inquired, What about your commitment to marry me? You yourself gave it up. Besides, there's nothing in the receipt about the marriage relationship, so don't talk nonsense, Oscar replied. The girl stood up with tears in her eyes, stowed the envelope in her bag, and walked toward the exit. Melanie, have a nice day, Oscar shouted after her. He held the receipt in his hands and muttered in relief. I propose we have a small lunch for part of that day. How'd you feel about that? The lawyer gladly agreed. Melanie walked down the street without looking around. For some reason, she thought that Oscar would be greedy and for the money, not to give it back to Melanie, would run straight to divorce her. Where'd he gotten that Vivian? And Oscar decided to share his story with his wife so that there would be no misunderstandings or secrets between them that could be devastating to their relationship, which he held very dear. When Oscar finished his story, Vivian smiled. And you're a master at getting into unusual stories. Since you're in such a good mood that you can't be upset by anything, I'll think I'll do it right now. You'll do what? The spouse was frightened. Vivian whispered back. Congratulations to you. We're going to have a baby. Oscar jumped up from his seat and looked at his laughing wife in surprise. Really? We're going to be parents? Vivian was pleased with the way her husband took her words. It was a signal that he was willing to share equally with her all the trouble of caring for the baby, rather than resent being kept awake. The couple talked for a long time that night, imagining what their future baby would be like. Oscar dreamed aloud that a daughter would be born. It's going to be a terrific baby girl. They say intelligence is passed on their mother's side, so I'm sure she'll be just as smart as her mother. What if it's a boy? asked Vivian jokingly, watching the dreamy expression on her husband's face with a smile. Well, that's all right. Let it be a boy. He'll be as smart as you are, and I don't need anything else. Melanie, meanwhile, was sitting in the company of her acquaintances, who expressed aloud their sympathy for her failed wedding. Yes, your Oscar was a fool, said a friend. How could he have so easily abandoned you and married another at once? Melanie could only nod her head in silence. Although, deep down, she knew that she herself was to blame.